All right, you guys, we're going to start activity three. Uh, we're going to talk about glomeromycetes and basidiomycetes. So watch this lecture. Uh, there's a fair amount of additional videos, and these are going to be for your questions number five through seven. For number five, it does ask you to observe specimens, and so there's a slide in this PowerPoint file that have three specimens that you guys will be drawing in your worksheet. All right, so first the phylum glomeromycota. We're not going to go super in depth with these guys. We're not going to do their life cycles, uh, but they are really cool because they are responsible for forming endomycorrhizal fungi. Uh, this is when fungal roots, uh, or sorry, when fungal hyphae uh, penetrate the cells of roots of vascular plants. Uh, and these are really, really important uh, for a lot of reasons, but they. Um, yeah, so they're, these connections are really important for the fungi and that they're able to cure some sugar, but they're also really advantageous for the plants in many ways too. Um, so these uh, types of fungi are also referred to as arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi or um, the vascular arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, uh, so VAM or AM fungi, um, meaning that they are forming the symbiosis with plant roots, so the plant's getting nutrients out of it and the fungus gets carbohydrates. Uh, these are super cool because they are going into the plant cell wall, but they're actually not uh, puncturing the cytoplasm of the cell. So this big branching structure that you're seeing here, it's within the cell wall of the plant root, but it's not actually within the cytoplasm. So it creates this really cool network. All right, but the main thing that we're going to talk about are uh, basidiomycota. So these are our club fungi. Uh, these are what you're thinking about uh, like if you think of just a regular fungi that you like buy in the grocery store or just usually one that you see around, they're mostly Bicidiomycota. Uh, they're really, really diverse and they have different diverse life forms we'll talk about. Um, they have, their fruiting bodies are called basidiocarps. Um, they only reproduce sexually. There is no asexual reproduction cycle. Uh, and their hyphae are linked together by diagnostic clamp connections that are only found within the dikaryotic hyphae of Bicidiomycota. All right, so within their hyphae, they have these, uh, it's still the vegetative body, just like any other fungi, and the plasmogamy will occur at between the two different mating types, so that could be green and orange in this case. Um, however, in basidiomycetes, these clamp connections, which are like these little bridges between the septate hyphae, link the cells together, and they're going to deposit a differing set of nuclei, so it's kind of like uh, shuffling the deck, uh, you're shuffling the genetic deck, um, and so it's not asexual reproduction, and it's not quite sexual reproduction, it's uh, just working for the hyphae, but it is kind of mixing up the genetic information. Okay, so the components of a basidiocarp, so this is just a classic mushroom shape. There are a lot of different types, uh, and so the cap and the mycelium, hyphae, vulva, stem, and ring, these are all really important parts. So if you ever wanted to be able to do field ID of fungi, you would have to be really comfortable with all these parts. But we're going to focus in on the gills. So these are where spores are being produced in the mushroom. It's located under the caps. Um, and there's a video here of a cap fungi growing in time lapse. So the fruiting bodies are the mushroom part that you think of. And so they're growing up and they have on their underside, you're going to see the gills and that's where the hymenium is going to be. Okay, so let's go over their life cycle. Uh, so the mature form of the basidiomycota are N plus N. So they hang out, most of their adult life is in N plus N. Uh, and then they're going to undergo, uh, along the reproductively active tissues, the hymenium, they're going to undergo uh, plasmogamy. And then it's going to further undergo into karyogamy. So, and that's going to be happening on each basidia, or um, it's a basidium if it's singular, it's a basidia if it's plural, um, and that's going to form the 2N uh, zygote that we're used to. So this is all happening along the wall of each gill. There is a hymenium layer, so it's a whole lot of reproductively active surface area under each mushroom. Uh, the uh, zygote will then undergo meiosis and produce basidiospores, which are 1N, uh, and those spores kind of form at the end of the club, and so they usually, I don't know, they this is very club-like, and the spores will always form at the end. There's usually four, um, and then via mitosis, uh, the spores will grow and spread their, spend most of their life as 1N when they're just uh, developing hyphae, kind of younger. 
And then here we're going to see plasmogamy happening. So uh, plasmogamy in this one is not happening until, or plasmogamy is happening before karyogamy. So you're seeing plasmogamy occurring uh, in the younger uh, immature form. And so it's going to be an N plus N. And then remember that the mature adult form, it's going to spend most of its life in N plus N. So plasmogamy will have already occurred. Um, all right, so some variations in life form. Uh, the traditional basidiomycete with gills, uh, is just a gill cap mushroom. Uh, you also see tooth fungi. There are boletes, which have pores instead of gills. Uh, coral fungi, these big arms. Some basidiomycetes have uh, sacs of spores like stinkhorns, puffballs, and earth stars. Um, and then other basidiomycetes have a tough woody shelf, and those are polypores. Okay, so just remember that the hymenium is located in the gills of the classic mushroom, but in folates and polypores or the teeth, it's located in different layers. Uh, so we're seeing the basidiospores and the basidium forming off of the hymenium, but it's in different spots with those different growth forms. Okay, so for example, uh, with bolete, uh, you're going to have the hymenium is going to be contained along the surface of those pores. And corals, it's uh, the up, it covers the upright branches, except for at the very, very base is where the hymenium is. Okay, and then in uh, puffballs, earth stars, and stinkhorns, uh, it'll be kind of like an inverted sac, inverted sac, and so the uh, hymenium will actually be kind of on like the inner layer within that thing. Okay, and tooth fungi, it's on the um, surfaces of the teeth. So within each little teeth, there'll be a layer that will be covered right there. And then in just your traditional mushroom, it's going to be along the surface of the gills. So the location of the hymenium is important in the different groups. And then polypores, uh, it's usually on the underside of the cap, which has pores. Okay, so uh, like you showed in that big diagram, so the basidium will grow off of the hymenium, and then the basidiospores will grow off of that basidium. And you can see them in this microscopic image, they're stained red. Okay, and they kind of always cluster like that. Uh, so this is a cross section into a bolete on the surface, and you can see that the basidiospores are attached to the basidium, these clubs. This shows it again. If we would be doing this in class, we usually take a cross section ourselves to see this or look at a slide, but it guys just kind of have the picture. So the hymenium is running all around here, and then the basidium will grow all along the hymenium, and the basidiospores will be uh, the one end structures that'll break off from the basidium. Okay, here's some extra videos for you guys to watch to help that out. Um, and these are going to be your specimens you're going to use. Uh, you can look at the PowerPoint slide to freeze it yourself. And that should help you answer, oh, 